Hello, this is Jack Jackson. Today we're going to look at constant relations. Constant relations are relations of the form y equals a constant or x equals a constant. And uh, this gives us a good example of how we can look at the formula, the table, the graph, and even a dinograph and really start with any one of those four and get the other three. And we know exactly what the structure is in all four of them. We can figure this one out pretty easy because this is a pretty simple, in fact, probably the simplest kind of relation. Uh, probably it's kind of a little boring because it's so simple, but at least it's a good place to start. It's always good to start with something simple we can understand and then build on that later. So let's look at an exercise here where we take the relation y equals 3, and I want you to make the following things. Make a table, a dinograph, and a Cartesian graph, and of course we already have the formula. Then I want you to think in general when we have y equals c, where c is some constant, for example in this case c is 3, but it could be any constant real number c. Describe the, stru describe the structure you see in the table, the dinograph, the Cartesian graph, and, and the formula as well. And are these types of relations functions of x, and why do we name them constant relations? So see if you can think about those things for just a minute. Uh, and then come back after you've thought about this and constructed these things. Press pause now. Well, now that we're back, we can take a look at this, and we see that what's happening here in the dinograph, or an arrow diagram for that matter, we have every possibility down here for the uh, input, but the output is always just that specific number 3. So all the arrows start at different places, but they all point to one single number. And when we look at our graph, what we see is we get a table. Let's look at the table next. The x's can be anything, but the y's or outputs are 3. The formula is y equals 3, so y is 3, regardless of what x is. So x can be anything. There's nothing in this that you know, pro prohibits x from being anything here. And of course, if you start graphing all these points in a Cartesian plane, these are ordered pairs all fall on a horizontal line. So the graph is a horizontal line. So in general, when we have constant functions, they're horizontal lines, or y equals c. The formula is y equals some specific number for any constant real number c. The y values are all this same number c in the table, but the x values are arbitrary. In a dinograph, the arrows start everywhere. <clears throat> But they only point to one value, the value C, for the output. So all the arrows point to the same thing. It's sort of everything going to one number. As a Cartesian graph, it's a horizontal line. Notice the domain is all real numbers, but the range is a set just containing that one number C. And so notice that these graphs are functions, but they're not one to one. Like they're everything going to one. So horizontal lines are the only lines that that represent functions but not one-to-one -one functions. They're named constant functions because the output, the y value, is constant. In other words, the y value does not change. It remains constant. Now here is a uh, summary again with a graph. And this is an output from a GeoGebra investigation. And we're going to take a look at this real quickly. So if we look on Blackboard, you're going to have some GeoGebra investigations here. We're going to be looking at investigations like this from time to time. And we have two of them that deal with constant functions. Uh, one that you can manipulate a point and one by a parameter. And, uh, for example, if I click on this, it comes up in your web browser. It should come up and work without installing anything. Now, in this case, I can't see the whole table, so I'm going to move this over a little bit until I can see the whole table, and I may want to move this out of the way. And cell B1 is the value that we want to put in, so say uh, I want this to be uh, 3. I type that number in, and we can see the horizontal graph. Over here is the formula, y equals 3. Okay, And if we take any point on that graph, notice we get various points here, but the y values are all three, and here is uh, part of a table here, and uh, this tells us where we, uh, this number here, I can start anything I want, and I put this one to, to say how far I go up, so I can adjust the table a little bit. So, very uh, simple type of relation, 
but this is an ex example of how we can use a, uh, I'll use this program GeoGebra from time to time to help gen generate some investigations. This one's not terribly exciting, but we'll get some later that are going to be a little bit more interesting. And the nice thing about GeoGebra is it, it doesn't require you to have any particular software installed on your computer. It pulls this up in your web browser. Okay. Now, if we want to graph a horizontal line on the TI-84, that's pretty easy to do. For example, if we want to graph a horizontal line at a height of 4, we just grab, we hit our Y equals button where it says Y1 equals. We put in the number 4 and enter, and we got ourselves a graph. I just showed you the window here to see where we are so we know what these numbers are. But, of course, the Ys here are going up by 1s, and so this is 1, 2, 3, 4. There we are. Y equals 4, horizontal line. Easy to do. And, of course, we could look at the table there if we wanted to as well. All right, now let's switch it to instead of Y equals a constant, what about X equals co constant? So just like the last time, let's take a specific example here. Let's say X equals negative 5. And, again, this time get out a piece of graph paper and make a table, a dynagraph, and a Cartesian graph this time for X equals negative 5. And then think about, in general, what happens if x equals a constant, x equals c, for any constant real number c, and tell me what structure you're going to see in general in the table, the dynagraph, and the Cartesian graph. Are these types of relations functions of x? And why do we call these constant relations? Uh, go ahead and do this exercise, think about these questions, and then come back when you're ready. Press pause now. So now we're back. We can see this time the input is one particular number, in this case negative 5, and it's the output that can change. It can be anything up here. So no matter what it is, the input is always the same. But the output could be anything. So this tells us that the outputs can be selected in our table over here. Y can be anything. Notice Y is not in the formula, so there are no restrictions on Y. But the X has to be negative 5 every time. So you can see the table has all the X's to be negative 5. And, of course, if you graph all these points, you get a vertical uh, line here. And any point on that vertical line will have the same coordinates. So, in general, what do we see when we have x equals c? That's a constant relation. It's a vertical line. Uh, so the formula is x equals a constant for any real constant number, specific constant number c. The x values are all the same number, c. But the y values are co completely arbitrary. So the arrows in a dynagraph or an arrow diagram are always going to end up any, well, anywhere. They can end anywhere, all real numbers, but they only come from one point, the value C. So it's 1 to everything. So Cartesian graph, this is a horizontal line. So this time the domain is one single number, the set containing just that single number C, but the range is a set of all real numbers. And so note that these graphs are not functions. Definitely you get the first coordinate repeated. In this case, the first coordinate the same first coordinate all the time. They're, all of them are repeated the same first coordinate infinitely many times. So vertical lines turn out to be the only lines that do not represent functions of x. They're the only lines that fail the vertical line test. And they are named constant relations, not functions of course, relations, because the input is constant. The x value doesn't change. So we talk about something being constant, it's not changing. And here, again, is a vertical line by parameter. I'll let you guys look at this. There are four of these um, um, GeoGebra investigations. This one, you, enter, you change the parameter over here in the, uh, in the uh, spreadsheet part, and it uh, dynamically adjusts everything else. In the other two examples, there's a point that you move around, and everything is figured out from that point. I'll let you investigate that on your own. Now, graphing vertical lines on the TI-84 is a little bit trickier because, um, well, to, if you do the Y equals screen, 
uh, it needs to be y equals. Well, vertical lines aren't y equals anything. Their x equals a constant. Y is not in the formula. So y equals something, that's a, basically a function setup. Well, this is not a function. So I just showed you that I cleared this out, and you can see the window down here. But you can draw a vertical line. You just have to do it a different way. So what I've done is gone to the home screen, and then I selected draw. And you select draw by pressing the second key and the program key. Of course, above the program, you'll see draw in blue. And so then you'll get this screen here. Go to, scroll down to, uh, arrow down to the fourth one and hit enter or just type four. And that will give you vertical and then type in the number, like in this case, six, and enter. And so now we have a vertical line, x equals six. And so we can draw vertical lines even though they're not functions. So, so far we've learned how to graph functions if we know the formula, but we've also learned how to graph one example of a non-function graph, which is a vertical line. Now, if you're going to graph in the program Graphmatica, it's even easier. You just go into the little box here. If you notice, it's kind of tiny here, but right here I've right written in, I just typed in y equals 3, and boom, we get a horizontal line at y equals 3. Or down here, I've typed in x equals 2.5 and enter, and then boom, you've got a nice vertical line there. So it's even easier in Graphmatica. Um, finally, I just want to bring up one, one uh, thing that we should note. Notice that the grid lines in a Cartesian graphing system or a rectangular graphing system are just the constant functions. X equals a constant is the vertical grid lines and Y equals a constant are the horizontal grid lines. And so the grid lines are your constant functions when you're looking at a Cartesian graph. Okay, and of course it's, sometimes it's called a rectangular coordinate system because when you graph all of these vertical and horizontal lines, you see bunches of little rectangles uh, formed there. Okay, so our basic goals and objectives are pretty simple this time. You should be able to, with and without the aid of technology, describe the characteristics of the formula table, dynagraph, and Cartesian graph of constant relations, both uh, for x equals a constant and y equals a constant. And, in other words, both for horizontal and vertical lines. Be able to find all four representations of these relations given any one of the four. So given any one of the four, that is, given the form of the table, dynagraph, or the Cartesian graph, any one of those four, you should be able to recognize that this is a constant relation and which one it is, vertical or horizontal line, and find all, well, you have one, four, one of the four representations, find the other three as well. And, of course, you should be able to graph, uh, with technology, you should be able to graph vertical and horizontal lines uh, on your calculator and in Graphmatica, and, of course, by hand as well.